Well, thanks for staying with us as we look to begin our conversation around headline stories as captured on the front pages of the Daily. Permit us to once again pay our respects to the governor of Aquibum State and the good people of the state following the demise of their first lady and wife of the governor, Pastor Patience Umueno. Well, the Commissioner of Information in Aquibum State, Comrade Ini Ememobong, released a press release in the early hours of this morning with uh, the caption, Unexpected Sunsets. And indeed, it is a great loss to the people of Aquibum State. Now, well, joining us on the program now to begin a review of this headline features is Dr. Steve Okori. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Well, Dr. Steve, uh, it's wonderful to have you on the program. It's uh, been a minute. Mm -hmm. And as usual, we're looking forward to a very robust conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, let's uh, get set the ball rolling. First October is just around the corner. Nigeria is turning 64 uh, years. Mm. And uh, preparations are underway, even though the Secretary to the Government of the Federation mm -hmm. uh, recently stated that the President had asked for a toned-down celebration leading up to uh, October 1st. How would you react to this uh, at, at a time when the country is grappling with a lot of uh, issues that some might say are not worth celebrating? <laughs> now, uh, the question I want to ask is... Uh, why is the president, or why did the president ask for a toned down celebration? Yes, yes. why? Well, well I, I, I certainly wouldn't know. I'm not the president. Yeah, but <laughs> you must have, they would have given a reason uh, or reasons why they are asking for that. Perhaps the, 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 daily, was, the Daily Trust says hardship. Mm, uh, the reason. We just read it before you came in. Is the, the reason daily for the toned down? Probably not the reason, but it said hardship. Mm. Tinibu orders low key 64th independence celebration. So it's are, they, are, they, are they experiencing hardship? They're asking for a tone down because of hardship. Are they experiencing hardship? If they, they should make it public, as in transparent. Let us know how much has been voted for this low-key celebration that they're asking for. We saw in this government where the minimum wage committee had one billion and 500 million was uh, released for a team of uh, Nigerians to sit down and negotiate minimum wage. So if they give hardship as a reason, they are not experiencing it. It's the general masses that don't even participate in the independence celebration that are experiencing hardship. So for me, it, it doesn't make sense if that is the reason. You know. But no. they should let us know the budget for the uh, for down. the 64th independence yes. celebration. How much are these have they budgeted for it? Well, we did see know. the Minister of National Planning and Budget there, uh, Al Haji Tiku Bogudu, mm -hmm. but that wasn't mentioned during the World Press Conference. Some of the issues mentioned, which a lot of Nigerians are reacting to, and much like uh, the crew in the studio this morning is looking to find out, were comments made by the SGF, who is the chairman of the planning committee. Mm -hmm. He said 20 million Nigerians are to get cash support. Mm -hmm. And again said that uh, the current administration is key mm -hmm. on avoiding the missteps of the past. Mm -hmm. In balancing these comments he made, many are looking at it from that palliative method of 20 million Nigerians as against most Nigerians who you say are the ones facing this hardship mm. as against the ruling class. Mm. How do we balance this conversation? <laughs> you see, uh, fella of blessed memory, I sometimes, I, because of the situation we have found ourselves, I, I like listening to some of his songs, you know. And these are just common magic. The people that will be selected, the 20 million Nigerians that will be selected, which yardstick would they use in selecting them out of the many, many millions of out Nigerians? Out of the over 200 million Nigerians. That are, poor, that are poor, you know. It is still boils down to the political class selecting the ones that they know that they feel will benefit from it directly from them, you know. And the budget, the government will make such an amount of money available. Is it the actual amount that gets to the people? The whole lot is wrong, you know. So, uh, when they begin to give reasons like this, this is the reason why, what have the steps changed from what we saw previously and what we are seeing now? For me, the steps haven't changed. You but, know? But, so, when they, as leaders, they should lead by example. They should live according to their words. They are saying that uh, you, are, you are turning down the celebration of independence uh, celebration because, because of, of hardship. hardship. And then uh, we see you guys live lavish life, convoys of vehicles, and all that, and we're not seeing that, they're not practicing it. 
I, I mean, during the uh, UN 79th UN General Assembly, mm -hmm. the president declined attending, instead sent Vice President Kashim mm -hmm. Shatima to mm -hmm. represent him there, citing concerns about the current situation of the country and saying he would rather remain here mm -hmm. and solve the problems of Nigeria and mm -hmm. focus on our issues than to travel out there. Do you, don't you think that the president deserves some sort of kudos, considering that, firstly, the instance of the UN General Assembly and now asking for a toned down celebration, it appears that he really is in touch with the reality of what is currently going on with the buses. You see, the UN uh, General Assembly is an event where world leaders gather. Certainly. Right? So if our president wasn't there to put uh, issues before world leaders to help him, help him look at it, you know, to begin to see how to come in a way to support him, you know, to see that these issues that we have in the country. Insecurity is one of the basic problems that we have in the country. And you have a gathering where world leaders will assemble. And the only thing I heard was that uh, uh, they asked for debt relief and uh, they said uh, uh, Nigeria is hungry and they are channeling resources of funds into uh, war situations and all that. They were also asking for a seat amongst the Security Council. That cry, that, that cry has been there, you know. For, for, for quite some time. For quite some time, you know. So if Nigeria, as the most black populous nation, you know, if we really take our position in this world that we live in, we won't be asking for all this. Even when we ask that first request or demand, we should see that success comes out of it. But you have not positioned yourself in the situation where when you make certain demands, you know, the world leaders should look at it and say, okay, no, you know. So we really need to see how to put ourselves in such position. For me, that event that he sent the vice president, he would have been the one that would have been there, you know, because the man would be talking to them eyeball to eyeball. An event where, uh, what's his name, Biden, and the other world leaders other were world there. leaders are present. So most of our own world leader to our own president to be there, you know. So they will see the vice president as a representative, yeah. He has represented the federal government of Nigeria. But when they see the president himself in such an event, I think some respect will come. And uh, some better deals would have been had. Uh, uh, well, uh, let's take a look at the history of Nigeria from 1960 when we gained independence leading up to now 64 years. Mm -hmm. That's uh, six decades going seven decades now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that majority of Nigerians in the spirit of patriotism will have anything to celebrate about the country? I know that they, they might be two parties, some who are patriotic enough to say no matter what, mm -hmm. this is our country and it is worth celebrating. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there could be some people who, with the hardship that they are facing, insecurity, the food crisis, rising cost of living and all of that, might not really see anything worth celebrating in the country. What do you make of this? The majority of Nigerians right now, I, I, I'm not saying I want to speak on their behalf, but a lot of them out there, they don't see what they are celebrating. You know, we are celebrating independence. This is 64 years. Are we truly independent? For the, to be very sure of what we are doing, are we truly independent? You know, I, if you ask me my own opinion, I feel that uh, uh, the independence that we celebrate, we hurriedly, hurriedly went for, for it. Because if you begin to compare Nigeria today and South Africa, South Africa got had their independence in 1994, and we had our own in 1960, right? You see the level of development in South Africa, can it be compared to Nigeria? No. You know, so why the rush? Liberia got her independence in 1875 or thereabout, you know. But look at the level of development in Liberia. So when you see the difference, look at South Africa. Got their independence late, Liberia got had their own early. Quite early on. Can you see the difference in terms of development? So the independence that uh, the African countries celebrate, especially Nigeria. I, I mean, we, we, we started off on the right footing. Mm -hmm. and at some point, we missed at, it. At some point, we mm -hmm. missed it. Now, mm -hmm. many people would want to know mm -hmm. what happened, at what point? Or was it at the point where we started having military coups after coups? Or what exactly happened to our Nigerian system? Or was it the advent of democracy that 
crippled the entire Nigerian state. Where did we get it wrong as a nation in these six plus decades? What we got it wrong, for me, is at the level of leadership, be it military or democracy. Leadership. And that is why we keep getting it wrong till today. At some point, we were getting it right. And I don't know what happened that we missed it. Nigeria is a country that is blessed with abundant resources. And these resources are there. God blessed us with these resources and even gave us the opportunity, you know, to be able to harness these resources for the good of the country. Yes. What's the problem? These are the problems. These are the issues we are asking ourselves. Problems that were discovered from 1960 to date. Those problems are still hanging and we are still talking about them. I mean, one of them is certainly the, the, the oil and gas that we have in the country. Oh. Nigeria is an oil producing uh, state. Exactly. exactly. Uh, in what appears to be a blessing, it's certainly causing a lot, a lot of, of uh, issues. chaos exactly. and issues in the country. Absolutely. Uh, beyond the oil and gas, the resources mining and all that, we keep hearing a whole lot of things. Illegal miners, illegal this, illegal. For how long can we continue like that? So why do we have government come in, government go out, and we are still act, talking about these issues, the challenges? So it means that they are not even prepared to fix the, the issues. It shows that it's a deliberate thing. Well, in your, in your opinion, what better way could this celebration mm -hmm. have taken? Or it's still going to take place. It's yet Absolutely, to take place, yeah. But in what better way do you think the government could go about it that will not aggravate some Nigerians? Now, I, I think that it's... Uh, a period for reflections. You understand? Yeah. Because there's a whole lot that is wrong. What are we celebrating? We keep having these issues back and forth, back and forth, and the issues are not fading out. They are, we're not seeing solutions in sight to the problems. I think it's the period where the government should sit down and say, this independence, there won't be celebration at all. It's the time for reflection. Let us see where we started, where we are headed, where we missed it, what we need to correct. These are the things that I expect that we should be looking at now. You know? Yes. And don't, do not keep, don't continue giving Nigerians false hope. Let them believe that this is a government that is committed to serve. You understand? Give them that impression that, yes, we want to serve and we really need to correct the ills. Now you're, you're talking about the, the government is trying to correct the missteps of the previous administration. How do you not do you want to actualize that? No, no, there, there's something there's something noteworthy here on the daily independent, uh, one of the strap lines, where it says that the uh, SGF hmm. is insisting that the president is focused on putting more money in citizens' pockets. Hold on to that. And next it says Tinubu's administration inherited 2,600 road projects worth 13 trillion naira. Mm -hmm. Of the latter, do you think that this is perhaps what is impeding the progress of this administration in ensuring that they curb the economic hardship bedeviling the country? Now, he inherited road project worth 13 trillion. 13 trillion naira, right? yes. Okay, now, why won't the government see or go ahead to see how to fix these roads that he inherited rather than going to start a new one Coastal from the highway? And do you know how much is that coastal highway? Almost the same amount. You understand? And that's why I talk about setting our priorities. You understand? Yes. I think we need to sit down as a country. And the, 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 what baffles me is that when these leaders assume offices, they feel they know it all. You can't know it all. You must have to work with people that you have hired and you think that they are professionals. You must listen to them. I've listened to a, a governor where he said that he hires special advisors and he just hires them to occupy the office. You understand? It's not for them to come and advise him. How should somebody, a leader, a governor, say Make this? such a statement. You understand? Latin statement. Yes. Even the uh, President of Boston just said it when he was president. And that was what led to the resignation of uh, the late uh, Rouhani Lukman when he was an uh, uh, advisor on petroleum resources. You know? And the man left the government. So if you think that certain people 
are qualified professionally to do certain to render certain services for you and you hire them you must have to listen to them because they are coming from a professional angle yes you know but here in nigeria we have political leaders that know everything when they sit down as governors or and they come tell them about the economy they, they know it tell them about security they know it they know everything and you can't work like that you know so issues where every government inherits liabilities of previous government right so for me it's not for them to begin to complain try and see how to fix it our president said it is on national television everywhere that he asked for the job yes and nobody should pity him now talking about the president the guardian had a funny way of picturing this earlier on in our overview they used the caricature of mr president with his many troubles citing issues internal crisis that despite his foreign missions mm -hmm. continue to hinder the progress of the renewed hope agenda mm -hmm. issues like inflation power energy crisis the economy uh, poverty corruption and even the fuel crisis some of this uh, many say are self-inflicted owing to the approach with removing fuel subsidy but despite applause this morning experts are warning much like you've said about uh, the burdens of having a four trillion naira wage bill every year mm. that we're already in so much debt having such a huge wage bill might not be quite efficient especially with these challenges that are tying down the administration's drives towards repositioning nigeria mm. how do we approach this second very crucial issue going into the next budgetary year you see nigeria is not a poor nation but they shouldn't give us the impression that the country is poor we know the resources that come as a result of revenue generated by agencies of government that are saddled with the responsibility of generating revenue you know we see how much they share monthly the federal allocation you know we see all that so a committee was set up when it had to do with uh, the minimum wage and they looked at the records what comes in what can be used as salary and this four trillion uh, wage bill is for just one million two hundred nigerians that's the federal workforce one million two hundred nigerians that will be paid that amount of money you know so for the committee headed by the minister of finance right yes and uh, the coordinating minister of the economy mm -hmm. that's not a burden to the government because they checked the records and saw that this is doable and don't forget that when they agreed on this uh, 70,000 minimum wage fuel was at uh, 617 naira yes now we have fuel uh, that has gone above uh, a thousand naira yes. and all that so the the NLC will still come back asking for for an increment if you don't uh, is expected but my worry about all this is that there are, I keep saying it we have a whole lot of Nigerians just one million two hundred Nigerians are going to benefit from this so the other balance of Nigerians that don't even expect anything at the end of the month what happens to them they need to leave how can they afford the basic needs of life, yes. food? A whole lot is happening. So when you think that you are solving one, the major problems are hanging there. You are not even touching them. I'm not even talking about them at all. Now, out of the so many Nigerians that are there, you come and pick like 50, 20 million, they said. At the end of the day, it will be 50,000 naira or highest, 100,000 naira that will get into their account. How long would they live with that? And, and, and another issue that um, most Nigerians tend to complain about, uh, Dr. Steve, is the issue of taxation. Yes. Nigeria, Nigerians are burdened heavily mm -hmm. by taxes in the country. Almost everything, everything Nigerians do, they pay taxes. Mm -hmm. You go to buy something at a grocery shop, you pay taxes via VAT. Yes. You get paid, payee is deducted from your, from your uh, salary. Mm -hmm. Or you do a business transaction is either VAT is with is is deducted or withholding tax is removed. You you are taxed virtually everywhere. Yeah. You make a bank transaction, you are taxed. Nigerians worry about this. Yet somehow the presidency is making a statement that President Bola Tinubu's aim is to ensure that he puts more money in Nigerians' pockets. Is the president perhaps using one hand to put money in Nigerians' pockets and, you, and using the other hand, one to, to remove it. it. What are we looking at? That's what it's doing. So now, there are some, just the way I said, now, 
There are some Nigerians that don't even take salaries, don't even have salaries at the end of the month. Those Nigerians are also paying. You see, when the government, when they were asking for Nigerians' votes, campaigning and all that, they gave Nigerians a whole lot of hope, the impression that they are going to fix these things. And now, the government is shifting their inadequacies on the people. You buy NEPA credit today, the next day is, it's gone. You make a phone call, in two minutes, it's gone. Data, you buy data today, tomorrow it's finished. Ah, no. Nigerians are just going through a whole lot. Electricity tariff is another problem. So, uh, it, it's like there's an increasing hike in electricity tariff and Nigerians do not even realize how high it keeps getting mm. day by day. No, no, no. I, I mean, in, in mm -hmm. the case of fuel, mm -hmm. it's obvious because you go there, you see the meters and mm -hmm. all, but most people don't really pay attention to how much they're even buying a unit of... Uh, that is not, it's not visible. It's you, not they visible. can't see it. Even the, the one that you talk about, filling station and yes. you get fuel, you can see it reading, but they, are they dispensing the one liter for one liter? That's a big question. We have weight, weight and measures. When last have we seen weight and measures in fuel stations trying to see that the actual uh, liter is the liter that they dispense? Well, well, it, it appears that there is a lot of loophole in this, Dr. Steve. Absolutely. And, and you obviously look tired of all of this uh, uh, problem. I should be. Bedeviling Nigerians. Yes, I should be tired. In your, in your opinion, yeah. where should we start from? And what should we do as a country on our part as citizens and on the part of the ruling class to ensure that Nigeria gets back on track and Nigerians are living a good life and not necessarily just surviving in a country as rich as Nigeria? All that is on the political class, the political leadership. I just said it. Let us have leaders that lead by example. You can't tell Nigerians that the policies that you are bringing on board will be beneficial and it's long term, right? Yes. You are giving them hope. The poor people on the street, you are giving them hope that what you are doing today in the next five years, 10 years. And the same poor people are seeing you, telling them this, that your own benefits are immediate. There's already a distrust, right? Yes. There's already a distrust. So whatever you tell them, they're just hearing you for hearing sake. You are telling the, the country that uh, you are turning down the independence celebration because of hardship. And as president, as leader, they see that you buy fleet of bulletproof vehicles. You want to drive the kind of vehicle the president of the U.S. is driving. It's contradictory. It's contradictory. Their words should be their bond. Nigerians will take, take you for your, for your words. But we are seeing it different in entirely. You can't, you can't work like that. Let them have confidence in your government. Make them believe. The Senate president, former Senate president, went to uh, visit our president and he told them that he, he's not president for personal gains. And you expect Nigerians to believe you. Well, well I, I believe actions should speak louder than, than words in this situation. Mm -hmm. But somehow, I still would want to give... Now, this is on a personal note. Yeah. I still would want to give credence to President Bola Tinubu. Okay. For some time now, he appears to be the only president who visibly shows concern mm. and, you know, shows relation mm. to the mm. hardships of Nigerians, mm. saying that, yes, he knows there's hardship, yes, he knows the economy is stagnated mm. and people, businesses are suffering and all, mm. but Nigerians should be patient because... He's taking these hard economic policies mm. to ensure mm. that even though suffering may last for a while mm -hmm. or suffering may last for a night, joy comes in the morning for Nigerians. Mm. He appears to be really, really resolute about that. Kudos to him. Don't you think so, Dr. Steve? No, 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 no. Why? No. You see, the president is a servant. We elected him to serve. What does a servant do? Take responsibilities for others, right? Yes. So he's taking our responsibilities to see that the country is fixed. 
We don't have insecurity issues. The economy is booming. Nigerians can travel to any location to have their businesses done. You know, enabling environment. This is what we have voted him for. So if he's performing those responsibilities, we shouldn't give him. We shouldn't commend him because that is what he asked for. If you if you compare the current you know, administration to the last, it is it, sorry, it is in this yes. country that when political uh, leaders construct roads, build a building or something infrastructure, they will gather the and applaud them. Why? Is it their personal funds? It is not. So why would they do that? We see what what roads are constructed. We don't see anybody there. Commissioning ceremony is another means of corruption. Now, Who's very quickly, Dr. Steve, we have little less than 10 minutes. And let's help put another issue in perspective, which I'm very sure the viewers will want to get your thoughts on. Yeah. Now, and a lot of persons would be scoring the president come October 1st on a promise mm. that he made on New Year's Day that he would reshuffle his cabinet. Mm. Now, a former president daring enough to reshuffle his cabinet and thereby also dismissing the CBN governor at his time, mm. talking about Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, made a statement yesterday at a book unveiling. The book was published by his uh, uh, minister of national planning at the time, Dr. Mm -hmm. Samsudin uh, Usman, mm -hmm. and he made the controversial statement regarding $49.8 billion, mm. which the Emir of Kanu State, Mohammed Sanusi II, who was mm. His CBN governor at the time has a difference in opinion on. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the challenge with administrations trying to ensure that the cabinet is in line with the president. Mm -hmm. Using that as a case study and with this issue coming up, how do we just oppose the need to curb corruption whilst ensuring that the dividends of democracy reach the Nigerian people? When I hear issues about uh, how to curb corruption and the people that are in government. <laughs> I don't want, I have a lot of information that I don't want to begin to divulge on the national television. There's a minister in this government in one year. Go and see what he has built. In terms of personal property? Yes. yes. Personal property. How did they make the money? In one year? See the structure, very massive. So when we talk about corruption, fighting corruption, when the people that are saddled the responsibilities... Well, are... well, well, well Dr. Dr. Steve, in, in what part of the city are we, are we talking about? Or what part of the country? So that we might just as well go on an oversight visit and See, you know, have a brief I, 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 um, view I will, of... I will say it when we are off, uh, <laughs> off air, uh, seriously. Right. But you but see, it's, 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 they think we are dumbs. They think we don't know what is happening in this country. A serious government that wants to fight corruption. Look at what is they, they do around the, the Aya Belo. The agency that is saddled with the responsibility of fighting corruption. Look at what's happening. The man came to your premises, stayed for three, four hours, left. At the end of the day, you guys carried guns and went and... What kind of drama is that? We saw in this country where former governors were jailed. ESCC spent our resources to prosecute the matter. They were sentenced to prison. The former gov president granted them pardon. Now, talking about pardons, because so of time, I'll, let's I'll, also chip I'll this issue serious. in as well. Talking about pardons and our correctional centers, the mm. Minister of Interior, Oluk Bumi Tundi Odo, also mm. has suspended four high ranking officers mm -hmm. in our custodial center mm -hmm. and is in relation to the Idris Okone, popularly known as Bobriski mm -hmm. Saga, mm -hmm. the leaked audio tape. Yes. This morning, we also listened to Honorable Patrick Omar of the House of Representatives urging the Senate to probe the matter. Mm. Persons are beginning to lose faith in the rule of law, mm -hmm. the role of prisons, and even in the EFCC, that is the anti-graft agency empowered to fight this corruption. Mm. Do you think that this is coming as a shock, or is it the case of uh, having some animals in the animal kingdom that are more equal than others? Bob Risky. thank. Well, I want to thank the Bob Risky, whether it's a she or a he. <laughs> for that revelation that he he or she wasn't in prison. Yes. You understand? We have, we have a whole lot of Nigerians that are sent to prison. They don't go there. His, his case is not the first case. I mean, it, it, it's, an, it's an open secret that the Nigerian prisons has some sort of VIP section. Absolutely. Where, where uh, uh, sentenced government mm. or elected mm. officials mm. go to, mm. they're in prison, but not really in prison. They're not in prison. 
They, they are around the premises. It's not even around the premises. Close to the premises. I have some information that the governors that were sentenced, that the president, former president granted a pardon. One of them wasn't in prison. I knew where he was staying. You know, these uh, prisoners, uh, sorry, what else, or what do you call the correctional officers that been suspended? For me, it is a CG. They would have suspended the CG. In the US, the head of Secret Service resigned. When because there's an issue like this. When an attempt on the former president uh, Trump's life, the heads should be punished. Seriously. It is not the, those four officers. The CG uh, controller, the controller general of uh, correctional service. Well, there's also an indictment man. involving the FCC following the, the 50 million extortion that was used to drop the mm -hmm. money laundering charges that was initially filed in the suit against him. Now, if we have this multifaceted loopholes in institutions that are trusted by Nigerians brought to the fore now, beyond this suspension that you think is not sufficient, what do you think that these institutions do to rebuild public confidence in them? They have a lot to do. Seriously. There's this distrust. EFCC is one of the most corrupt institutions, as I speak to in this country. I'm telling you. What are they fighting? They're not fighting anything. They're just going after perceived uh, 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 people and all that. I know of a case of an EFCC uh, lady collected huge amount of bribe. She even collected on behalf of the immediate past chairman. And when the immediate past chairman did not get his own in return, the lady, do you know that she resigned because the amount of money she collected was enough to take care of her and her family in the next 20, 55, 50 years that she lives on this earth. She refused to give that information about the amount she collected as bribe. So when you have an institution that is shrouded in all, this. all of that, and you expect result, there's no confidence. These are just institutions collecting salaries for nothing. Well, well Dr. Steve, as, as funny as all of these we must scenarios might seem, yes. it's quite ridiculous that Nigerians now see the system as completely failed. Mm -hmm. The other day someone was saying that in Nigeria it appears that the political class are the only patriotic Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Because doctors are living in mass, mm -hmm. engineers are living, uh, professionals in the country are living because the wages that they earn here mm -hmm. cannot sustain them and their families. So they leave to other climes of the world where they are better appreciated and better compensated for their work. Mm -hmm. But the ruling class... Mm -hmm that is at the hem of affairs, that is in touch with the country's wealth, is the only set of people that do not ever leave the country. They, well, where would they go to? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why not? I understand you very well. How, how did we get to this point? It's because the system is very innocent. We have systems in place that are supposed to check all this. The worry or the concern is that the operators of the system that are Nigerians. They don't have integrity. They are not patriotic. Rather than seeing that the system works effectively, they look out for ways to see how to thwart the system from working. It's a deliberate thing. I watched, uh, they were commending uh, the Minister of Health that he got a UN job or something, and he had to leave that UN job to come serve his uh, his country <laughs> quite commendable but when you're working in the un a penny spent accounted for. accounted for do you have that here in terms of transparency accountability you don't have that maybe that's why they are more patriotic than other nigerians well, well in closing it's almost nine uh, a last question <laughs> here especially off the back of one medium that has been used to through light to some of this secrecy or alleged corruption is social media. Mm. Now, going into the future, a lot of persons are asking that uh, that space be protected because it seems to be the only space in which press freedom is allowed. Are you of that opinion as well? What again? I think social it's... media, in yes. terms of a platform where this information comes out in mm. the open without being somewhat, you know, hampered or, mm. or, or scrutinized to the point that Nigerians are able to reveal some of this. Uh, ministry shaking secrets mm -hmm. that have been greeted by suspensions at least uh it's, it's been said not to be have been reported by any other media platform but for the social media platform the social media platform is doing very well in terms of uh, revealing a lot of things that are happening in this country 
Yes, when it appears on the social media platform, what are we expected to do? Is to carry out an investigation, right? So even if the, some of the issues or things that we see on the social media, even if they are not through, that's the reason why the, those things or issues should be investigated. But the social media platform for me is a welcome development. And we must see that we are not gagged. You know, we, should, we must you see that we use the platform to expose a lot of issues that are happening in our country. Oh, all right, Dr. Steve, I must thank you so much. Uh, this has been quite a very robust discussion <laughs> cutting across different uh, uh, sectors of uh, the economy and the country as well. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much.